that I can make up. I think a little blush. I don't know if you could tell, but there's like a lot of pink, pink blush. <laughs> also, yes, I'm wearing a Jujutsu Surprise shirt. <laughs> is it a men's shirt? Yes, it is. But I, you know, I love it. I'm a fan. And this is my first thing of Jujutsu Surprise that I own. And it's not gonna be the last. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> but this is actually a little bit of a spoiler in terms of what was my favorite of 2023, probably. So it's this. And there's another book that I don't have with me. But anyway, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Ola. This is my little corner of the internet where I share my life and books. Now I have a little bit more since I brought some from home. I'm gonna try and read these this month slash the next two months. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But Happy New Year. It's 2024. Crazy. This is the first video, like bookish, totally bookish video of 2024. And it will be all the books that I've read in 2023. We're going to be looking at everything that I've read on the list. I have my story graph here on my laptop. Uh, you can check out the reviews for these either on my Instagram or on StoryGraph. I have some on StoryGraph. I have a little bit more on Instagram since I usually think I've posted every single book that I've read on Instagram with a review. So you might want to check that one out. And in some posts, I did leave like a link or like a disclaimer that there's a longer review on my story graph. And those are usually for the Cassandra Clare books, I think. I think it was around that time that I was doing like longer reviews on story graph. But you can also add me on story graph link down below. Same for my Instagram. It's also down below. And yeah, without further ado, Let's get to the books that I've read in 2023. How crazy is it that it's 2024? I have not really done like resolutions, let's say. I haven't really done like reading resolutions, I don't think. Or have I? I'm not sure. I just want to enjoy what I'm reading and I want to read whatever I feel like reading without like any sort of weird pressure or without feeling like I have to be reading the new books that are coming out or anything of that sort. I guess it's that pretty much. Yeah. I just I just want to, you know, have fun with it. Also, this is a new edition. Do you like it? I thought that I would do like a little bit of a light here. It was kind of sad and I really, really love lights. <laughs> so I just yeah, I decided to take some from home and bring them here so this room would be a little bit more lively. But yeah. Uh, let me know what are your reading resolutions for 2024 in the comments if you want to and I will get to all the books I have read in 2023. I have reached my goal. My goal was 100 books, but I read 140 because of manga, let's be honest. But I do count manga to my reading goals. I know that some people like, apparently I assume from what I see that people have a problem with others counting like graphic novels and manga and those sort of things as like books for the reading goal which is a little bit weird to me personally because like you're also reading manga you're also reading graphic novels so i don't really get it but anyway i'm reading wrap up there's this wrap up thing on story graph which is like really really cool i have read twenty eight thousand eight hundred ninety two pages which is awesome my first book was Dead Body in the Library by Agatha Christie. And my last book was Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 19. Hence the shirt that I'm wearing. Because, you know, I'm I'm wrapping Jujutsu Kaisen because I love it. I know that it like goes to weird places later on, but I'm really enjoying the reading experience still, despite all the things that are happening and that I know are going to happen. Like I still really, really enjoy it. And I think the author is doing a really Great job. So, you embark on exciting adventures, delve into dark and intense narratives, and enjoy some lighthearted fun. 
most of the stories develop at a steady pace. I have my drink here as well because let's be honest I'm gonna be talking for a while probably. This is tea with uh, lemon and honey and I really love this cup, this mug. I brought it here from home. My pages actually went down a lot because I have read the most in April which was 4651 but oh well the genres I spent the most time with in 2023 manga which is over a hundred are we surprised not really <laughs> fantasy is 80 romance is almost a 60 horror a little bit over 40 and historical around 20 which is really weird because I don't really it's 16 to be exact I don't really reach for historical it must be something that's that's typed in manga actually that's pretty cool uh, my longest book was City of Heavenly Fire with 704 pages and my shortest book was The Case Study of Vanitas number 60.5 which was 10 pages the average length of the book that I read was 213 pages and it took me around 13 days to finish each book oh that's that's not bad the least time I spent on the book was a day and it shows The Witch and the Beast volume 4 uh, by Hosuke Satake it's a manga which for a manga it's pretty you know it, you're gonna read it in like a few hours so and the most that I've spent it <laughs> was actually on Atomic Habits and it took me 278 days guys it was it was not going on I started it and then put it away and it was annoying me that it was in my current reads which is why I went and finished it but it, it was a drag for me even though it was fine for a book the authors I spent the most time with in 2023 Gege Akutami are we surprised not really Yuji Kaku and Kosuke Satake which is all the manga authors. My average rating was 4.23 stars and I had many five star reads. Highest average rating was in February with 4.5. Turns out January wasn't my favorite month with an average rating of 3.87. In April I have read 4651 pages like I said which was the most pages I've read in a year. Most shelves was a Court of Thorns and Roses that I've given 3.5. This shelf was More Than a Married Couple But Not Lovers, Volume 5. My rating was 4.25. And highest rated here was Kubo Won't Let Me Stay Invisible. It was a 5 star and my rating was also a 5 star. I've explored what? I've explored the works of 35 new authors, including Akutami Yagitogi, Jorge de Sena, and Brian West. I have no clue. Jorge de Sena. I have no clue, but I guess we're gonna see. Because I don't think I've read anything. 107 of the books you read were part of a series. Yeah. It was only new stories and ideas for you this year, no rereads. That's actually not true. I have reread. The Old Man and the Sea. That wasn't the first time that I read it. It was a reread. I decided not to finish one of the books that I picked up this year and yeah it was Sayer one of them by Ulvem Akpam. I just didn't like it wasn't going the writing was in it and as much as like the stories in it like are probably what happens fictionalized it was just not it. Sorry. <laughs> And I read 19 books from my own shelf this year. Only 19, that's weird. After that, those are the stats. I think those are all the stats. Okay, we're gonna go into the books that I've read. We're gonna start with the first book that I've read until the last one. Earliest read to latest read. I have started with The Body in the Library by Agatha Christie and I give it a 2.5. It was a drag. I didn't remember the characters, it was just not it for me personally. Miss Marple books seem like really either miss for me, but usually a miss. <laughs> I've read The Witch and the Beast volumes 1 through 4 and that's 
a very good manga if you're looking for something that is like very fantasy heavy and has no romance because it just it has no romance but it's a very good manga and the witch is guy and the beast is a girl and that's all i'm gonna say because like it's really good just read it okay volume one 3.25 volume 2 3.75 volume 3 3.75 and volume 4 a 4 star then i've read dumaki by stephen king which was a fantastic read it's one of my favorite reads ever and it's definitely my top read of 2023 right next to jujutsu kaisen <laughs> because it was just it was brilliant my brother actually put me on this book he told me about it for years before I actually got to it and I'm really glad that I did read it last year because it was just, it was fantastic, so good. I truly recommend. Five star, obviously. Then I read The Old Man and the Sea because it's one of my favorite, favorite classics ever. And I've read it in school and ever since then I've loved it. It was like in primary school, I think. I gave it a 4.5 but it's a five star in my head and in my heart. <laughs> then I've read The Witch and the Beast volume five, which I gave a four star, A Court of Thorns and Roses, which I gave 3.5. It's just, the first book was like really, nah. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't like bad per se. It was just, okay, one thing, definitely the writing, like people really love to say that Sarah J Mass's writing is really bad, it, it was not, like it's not bad at all, and the only thing that was really annoying was like the plot points and the, the characters and how they went about like the plot, right, and that's like something that made me give it like 3.5, because it was kind of light bulb moments for them it was just really only okay i read the witch and the beast volume six through nine and i gave all of them a four star it's a very good series it did not hit like higher mark than four star for me just yet but it's it's very very good i read spy family volume 11 which i gave five star uh i read this on an app so i read it basically bi-weekly manga plus and it's great so I just have to like follow up in terms of like which volumes are which chapters because it doesn't say like which volume it is in on the app because it, they just have chapters, right? Then I have read 101 essays that will change the way you think and I give it a 3.5. It was, it was okay. Some essays were fine. Some essays were kind of boring I guess like it, it wasn't anything new it was everything that I could find online and there's a lot of things like that on Instagram even if you're into like quotes and those sort of things you probably have heard like most of these already and not from this book just you've heard them in general <laughs> A Court of Mist and Fury five star so good I did not expect it but it was so good The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho five star Again, chef's kiss, so good. Also, I did see a line that is actually in one of my favorite BTS songs, Tomorrow, and it's from this book. Uh, then I've read The Ice Guy and His Cool Female Collie, which was an anime that I started, and I started the manga because of the anime, obviously. And I read volume one through four, and I gave all of them a four star. It's very cute and the characters are super nice, the visuals, the art style, just so good. The author is also on Instagram and she's like super sweet. I would recommend like checking out her account as well because she has some like additional like little snippets and little arts like from the ice guy and stuff. So I would recommend that you see that and it's, it's just, it, it's a very cute manga. If you want something very chill and lighthearted, I would recommend. Then I've read Milk and Honey by Ruby Cower. I don't know how to say the last name, I'm sorry. Give it a four star. It's, it was very good. Some of the poems like really, really hit. And I, I just, I like poetry, you know? I've grown to, to notice about myself last year, I feel like, that I really know poems. I usually just saw them like on Instagram and stuff and I would read them and I would be like, okay. I would read them and I would be crawling further. 
but I just I think that last year I really really dawned on me that I really enjoy poems so then I read Jujutsu Kaisen volume 1 which I gave 4.5 I mean do, do I have to say anything? <laughs> because I don't think so then I read Death on the Nile which I gave it 4 star Poirot Agatha Christie books so good like they are just good I think I went on a spree of reading Jujutsu Kaisen from what I can see <laughs> <laughs> because I've read volume 2 through 11 and volume 0 and these basically range from 4.5 to 5 star obviously volume 0 was a 5 star because Yuta, my fave, right next to Fushiguro I mean obviously my favorite is Chiguro but Yuta is like a very close second just adore them they have read The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde I give it a 4.5, a recommendation from my best friend because it's one of her favorite, favorite books. And I really enjoyed it, it just didn't give me 5 star vibes. Because I I find it like very fascinating that I focus on different things than she focuses on. If you've read this book, let me know like what, what you thought. Because I, I think it was like really, really good. It was very good. And I enjoyed it. I've done like a lot of like annotating in the book as well just didn't live up to like my kind of five star read then I read Jujutsu Kaisen Summer of Ashes Autumn of Dust novel which is a light novel in the Jujutsu Kaisen world and I give it a 3.5 and the reason for that is that light novels really read like, very young because they're basically as if you're reading an anime a little bit you know and it's very fun but it's also a little bit it's a bit strange you have to like really get into it in order to enjoy the writing but the stories were really really fun i remember them still I read again jujutsu kaisen volumes 12 through 16. i think this was the end of the shibuya arc and i had to take a breather because oh my god <laughs> it was a lot it was a lot this was the moment where I gave volume 13, 14, and 15 a 5 star, so it says a lot. Then I read Hell's Paradise, Jiko Kuraku volumes 1 through 3, enjoyed it a lot, really like it. Then I read More Than a Married Couple, but Not Lovers, volumes 4 through 9. See, this is what makes up most of my like reading here. It's a lot of manga and it's a lot of series. We are just in a month where I've been reading a lot of manga at the moment. <laughs> More Than a Married Couple is like a very cute manga. It's super super pretty. Like the characters are just so stunning, so cute, so pretty. The girls are like the girliest girls ever and I love it. There's just a lot of miscommunication which is annoying. And there's a lot of like holding back and things like that and it's just yeah it's just kind of a mess in that sense but it's worth the mess for the rest of this <laughs> then I read Madakun level 999 volumes 1 through 6 it was good but at some point it started being like very boring to me the game aspect in the manga was like it was fine but it was a little bit too cutesy for me you know I just stopped reading after volume 6, I think. Then I read Hell's Paradise Side Story, Forest of Misfortune, because it came out when the anime was coming out. So it was very nice. I really, really loved it because I love the manga so much. Then I read Hell's Paradise volume 4. Oh, no, I did read another one of the Yamada. I read volume 7 of that as well. Then I finished More Than a Married Couple But Not Lovers volume 10, which was very nice as well. I finished Ice Guy and His Cool Female Colleague Volume 5. Then I went to A Galaxy Next Door, which is like the cutest manga ever. I say that a lot, I know, I realize, but it's truly, truly so fun. I really love the relationship of the two main characters, plus the kid characters, the cutest. Just so good. So I read Volumes 1 through 4. I read Hell's Paradise Volume 5. Or rather finished it then i read a recommendation from my friend sylvie and it was paradise kiss manga she said that was very good so i was reading it basically like spamming her in the dms <laughs> so i read all five volumes of that it was very fun i would recommend again 
The Ice Guy and His Cool Female Colleague Volume 6, which was also okay. These are like good, this is good manga. It's usually just a four star for me, easily. Then, all right, the case study of Vanitas came back, which was such an amazing experience <laughs> because I was, I was caught up on the manga. Volume 10 actually came out for us here in Poland like pretty quick, as well as Volume 9. I remember that I already had like the entire series of the, of the 10 volumes and the US they were still waiting for the English release of volume 9 and 10 so I was super excited to have a lot more to read from this world because I really really enjoy the case study of Vanitas and it's, it's a vampire story so if you like vampires but also like friendships sort of a more deep character as a main character then you're going to love it because this main character is actually a very morally great but he's got like a lot of things that you can figure out once you read the manga about him like there are these like little hints that I truly love uncovering and that's why like I love when characters are pretty pretty complex I read that chapter 58 I went ahead and read Hell's Paradise Volume 6 and I went for Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 17 which I finished and I read Atomic Habits which I have already spoke about earlier I'm definitely not gonna be coming back to this book I feel like the things that stuck with me are like fine then I read Kubo Won't Let Me Be Invisible Volume 5 because I started from Volume 5 uh, since the anime basically ended around there I believe so I started from where that ended and read the manga. Then I read The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern and I gave it 3.5. This is very funny to me because I have think about this book quite a bit, especially about the places that I listened to when I was reading the book that gave the book even better vibes than it had initially. As much as the pacing was like very slow and I didn't like that about it as much, I definitely loved the book for the vibes and the atmospheric read that it was, which is why in that sense it's it's pretty much a five star, but in like overall it's a 3.5. If you like vibes and aesthetic, read this book for that and it's gonna be a five star. I read Kubo Won't Let Me Be Invisible volumes 6 through 12, which is the last one. It was the cutest manga ever. I spoke about this in my previous like bookish video I think. It's basically about a boy who is invisible to everyone. His presence is so unnoticeable that he just is invisible to everybody apart from his classmate Kubo and Kubo is basically like crushing on him and he's a little bit not aware of that but <laughs> but he grows to know and it's such a cute cute story. It's, it's just the sweetest. It's another like romance, lighthearted read that I would recommend if you're looking for something to just chill with. Although it does get deep at times and that's something I really really enjoy as well. Oh yeah, I did go back into the Shadowhunters world. This was my like a little dip into it. I read the Mortal Instruments book 2 which was City of Ashes. It was okay. I remember the first book being like way more cringy than the second book was. <laughs> I can say that from book to book, like you could see Andrea Claire's writing getting better, and I really, really like that. Then I read The Case Study of Vanitas, chapter 59. Then I read The Book of Lost Tales by J.R.R. Tolkien. Also, a five star read. It's something more for, for like Middle Earth geeks, I would say. Then I've read My Happy Marriage manga volumes one to three. The art style is fine. It's not my favorite though. Like there's things about it that bother me a little bit, but it's still a cool, like really nice concept. It's, it's kind of like a Cinderella retelling sort of vibe. Kind of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. It turned out to be like a very good read. I didn't expect it, but it was a very good read and obviously it's a classic. I do want to finish the series at some point. I read the case study of Vanitas chapter 60. I just love the fact that Vanitas is back. <laughs> City of Glass, a very good read. Not seeing the differences between how the books went and how the Shadowhunters TV show had done their things. 
there were so many differences it was so fun catching on to those and i actually rewatched the show which reignited my need for this world and reading in this world it's also like the city of bones movie on tv a few times before i rewatched the show and it's just like a sign that i need to read these books and i'm very glad that i did Read the girl i saved on the train turned out to be my childhood friend and you already know it's a manga because this title is just so long and ridiculous <laughs> i read volumes one through three i ended on that because it was just it was just okay like it was nothing crazy would i recommend that really we're just not gonna talk about it it was it, it was so strange like weird i read the ice guy and his cool female colleague volume 7 i went on to read my happy marriage light novels and i read all four of them they were they were good i'm gonna say and they definitely are way farther than the manga is since the manga was started like later uh than the light novels so it's fun to be like way ahead but yeah i haven't followed if there's like a new volume of light novel out yet but the light novels read nicely so that's what i'm gonna say read the girl i like forgot her glasses volume four i started with four again because i was watching the anime so i just sort of uh, looked where i was in the episode that i watched and then started the manga it was volume four through eleven again it's it's a school setting but it's such a cute manga about a girl who keeps on forgetting her glasses and the guy who always like sees that happen and he likes the girl and he finds it very endearing that she forgets her glasses and they just sort of you know start sharing textbooks in class and like they just form a friendship and then that friendship blossoms into something more is just so cute i read clockwork angel by cassandra clare i read the city of poland angels the clockwork prince city of lost souls then i read the clockwork princess and that was the last book in the infernal devices series and i need a little bit of a break because i was crying literally like it was just it, it was so good especially like for me clockwork prince and clockwork princess were like the two best books but the entire series is just a five star series i read it in order of release and i read my dear curse casting vampires volume one which was a manga that i saw on one of the apps and i was just like curious to see well i saw it and it was okay it's very insalobi which i'm not a fan of like in particular but i mean it's pretty the concept is cool because it's vampires again and it's like a world where you really like have to be careful because these vampires like are sort of taking over like people know that they are a thing and it's it's dangerous to be out in the world so it's a, it's a very cool concept overall then i read the case study of vanita 60.5 finally got to reading the pension life vampire volume one it's on the manga plus app it's so cute the art is so pretty i adore it so much and the concept is, is also very fun but it's, it's also about vampires again so but it's just it's the cutest i really like it it's kind of like a found family building friendships it, it's just it's such a good vibe i love it Sea of heavenly fire which is the last book in the immortal instrument series and it was okay like i actually i don't mind the ending i guess but it's like when i look back on it it's kind of underwhelming a little bit i guess but it like it reminds me of the show and how rushed it was and i really wish that they had more time to execute this book in a much better way because in the show it was like so so rushed but the book itself was yeah i'm gonna say it was just good they read A Robot in the Garden by Deborah Install and I did not expect this book to be as good as it was but it was very very fun to read a little bit of a sci-fi book where people already own like androids and there's robots and those help out in your households and when you then don't have a robot it's basically saying what kind of status you have in society you know so this man finds a little or rather his wife finds 
a little robot in their garden and the man just kind of you know looks at it and then sort of bonds with him and he wants to fix him and because of all the adventures that they have together they create like father son kind of bond and it's it was just very sweet to see it's very much found family and it's it was so good they read hell's paradise special one shot side story then the case study of vanita serial 61 i went ahead to finish hell's paradise uh which the vlog is not out yet so i'm pretty sorry about that <laughs> hell's paradise volume 7 through 13. i'm gonna know my thoughts on this when i post the the vlog where i have read these volumes so i hope that you're gonna stick around for that you can subscribe and turn the bell on so you get notified when i post a video and i will make sure to like put it in the description or the title that that's the vlog obviously so that i also finished uh, my happy marriage volume 4 of the manga it was good i read spy family volume 12 which i think that i've actually read and finished like way before i actually put it here because like i said it's all chapters on the app you don't really know what sort of like volume you are reading case study of vanitas serial 61.5 which was good i feel like i'm i'm expecting like way more because i was very hyped for the first volumes so really truly loved where it went in volume 10 as well but right now it's just like a very slow process of like starting this new arc i think and reading it monthly is what makes it like makes me feel a little bit detached from the story as well which is sort of you know but it's still a very good manga i still love the characters and i still love what it's about then i read my dear curse casting vampires volume 2 i gave a four star because like i said insta insta love is just not my kind of thing i think besides that plot point is very good i finally finished the wind's 12 quarters by ursula k Le Guin, and i give it a 3.5 there were there were some stories that i really really enjoyed and there were some that were just going over my head so then i read the ice guy and his cool female colleague volume 8 i gave it four star like i said it's it's a very good manga but it's just good super pretty it, it has a cool plot because the main characters are actually adults and they're working in a company it's sort of kind of refreshing and very nice very light-hearted so I would recommend if you're looking for something like that and it's a manga so it's very quick to read you've reached sam which i don't have with me that's in tao i give it a 3.5 because well you can read my thoughts in my post on instagram but it was i'm like very conflicted about this because i i don't think i like the characters much but i did like the concept of of the book itself it did make me tear up a few times and that was fine because it's it's a book about loss and grief and like how, how to deal with that but also i i think that it could have been executed in a better way maybe character sense or something like i don't know there was something about it that just didn't hit for me as much but it did definitely make me think that fights and like holding grudges and things like that are just super super pointless and we should really appreciate the people that we have every single day because you just never know then i read the case study of vanitas serial 62 which was also a four star but that one was better than the last one <laughs> because it we finally like kind of dipped into a little bit more of what the arc is going to be right now and i just i really like that then i have read jujutsu kaisen volume 18 and 19 and that's how i finished my year because i wanted to finish jujutsu kaisen or rather catch up with jujutsu kaisen to what's going on on the app right now so i'm currently at i think volume 21 so it's such a good manga like i gave volume 18 and 19 five stars and oh my god guys i was i was freaking out about megumi like i'm sorry what he the, the boy was going feral i was just so shook but i loved it so much i i just adore his character so much 
I love his character ever since I saw him in the anime. First episode, it, it was done. done. Done deal for me. I loved it. <laughs> and it was the same when I started reading the manga, like immediately. I just, I, I don't know what to say. I love him. And seeing him go this feral because he wants to protect his sister, and just seeing him like it's it's a sort of different side of him that we haven't seen before that I just loved so much. It was so good. So like round of applause for that, five stars, just for him. It was amazing, truly. And then we also have, like in the volume in volume twenty, I think. Yeah, I think it's volume twenty. We have Yuta, because Yuta is back in the manga and in the anime as well, will be in season 3. My goodness, like I love Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, I love the movie and the manga. I'm just, I'm so happy for now, because I know where this is going, I know where it's heading, I know that so many people are actually like not very happy about <laughs> what's going on, but you can't really deny that the author like, they know what they are doing. They really do. And they are so good at writing, figuring out all these techniques and just, like, this entire world. It's just so good. And yeah, sure, they probably were inspired by some other manga, which I see a lot of comments about, actually, that this is, like, this looks like that and this looks like that, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter, you know? Because all of the stories are inspired by some other stories. That's just how it is. But it just... What matters is that they are like on their own as individuals are very good. And Jujutsu Kaisen really stands on its own in my opinion. And I really, really love it. So that's how I ended the year. With Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> okay, so this is the end of the video. These are all the 140 books I have read. Let me know how many books you have read in 2023 and what was your favorite and what was your least favorite book. I will be curious to know that. I think I'm gonna do another video where I talk about my favorites and like the least favorite. I don't wanna say like worst books because I'm not a hater. I don't really hate things. But if I don't enjoy them, then I'm just gonna tell you that I didn't enjoy it, you know? I will see you in my next one. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want to, to not miss out on the new videos that are coming. This year will be exciting. I will be doing a Pandora Hearts reread, so that's going to be a reading vlog as well. I'm super excited to dive into that world again. Super excited and super unready for crying as much as I'm going to cry. <laughs> and there's just like going to be many fun videos. I still have some vlogs to post from 2023, so hopefully you're going to want to watch those. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are doing well, that you are having a great day or night or whatever it is when you're watching this, and I will see you in my next video.